Good morning, folks. We've got a solar flare to see, a large earthquake, space news on the sun and two distant stars, and a geomagnetic study out of Asia. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on the sun with numerous pops and shifts in the corona. The largest of those events was an M-class solar flare of short duration, an impulsive flare. It came from the northern active region incoming, and its short duration reduced the size of its coronal mass ejection, and none of the events yesterday put significant plasma in the upstream line to Earth. That flare also destroyed the active region from whence it came, leaving the grouping to its south and the two active regions incoming at the limb. One sunspots are already visible, and the coronal fields you see arching over the side speak to the size of the incoming areas. Let's go to seismicity, where a bigger one rang out between Tonga and New Zealand, near the Kermadec Islands. At 6.6, this was a fairly strong event, but luckily it was out to sea and not big enough to produce a tsunami. Up next, honest astronomy. When a huge story broke last year about the closest black hole to us, only a thousand light years away, we said, no, no it's not. And mainstream science hawks gave us guff and grumbles. Today, it's official. There is no black hole there. Instead, we've got a vampire star situation. Periodically, the more massive of the binary pair of stars sucks the atmosphere from the other, creating a surge in luminosity and outbursting like every other accretion scenario we see in space. Not entirely sure what to think about this one. If it wasn't NCAR reporting it, I'd be trashing the scientists and the study claiming some coronal loops aren't loops at all, but wrinkles in the plasma of the sun's atmosphere. If so, they're electric wrinkles, thin arcades as electric currents. But in reality, this was a simulation done with imperfect presumptions, and I read them all. Their biggest hurdle, was looking in 2D at singular points in time. When the sequence runs, it's not at all challenging to see that a wrinkle is an inappropriate description of the observational reality with these loops, despite what their models and math want to say. Last but not least, in a 90,000 year reconstruction of the field, they spot all the normal events, but also the first sighting of one of the modern aspects of the same shift ongoing now. The identification of a deviation between eastern and western China's magnetic field measurements is now attributed to the movement of the Siberian flux lobe. Nearly all focus on the modern shift comes with geomagnetic jerks in the South Atlantic anomaly, but we find a similar, yet less extreme, aspect of the shift here. Just imagine when the shift hits its stride and the planet is changing a hundred times faster than it is today. Top 3 paper of 2020 in here is a little reminder. We greatly appreciate your support. Eyes are still on those sunspots today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.